You have a music tech company and you want to hire AI music talent, but this is a scary thing to do. Perhaps you don't know AI music very well, or you don't really know all the characteristics that you should check in an ideal AI music engineer candidate. But don't worry, in this video, I'm gonna share nine characteristics that I believe are fundamental for an AI music engineer, and I'm gonna give you a fundamental piece of advice on top of that. So let's get started with the most important advice that I have for you in this difficult process of hiring AI music talent. So that is, do not hire generalist data scientists. So why is that the case? Well, AI music is a very specialized field. You can have someone with years and years of experience in computer vision and image processing, for example, but this person would have a hard time working with audio and music data. And that's because that is a very, very specialized skill to have. And building those skills take a lot of time. So there's a huge steep learning curve for a generalist data scientist to become an AI music engineer. And why is that the case? Well because AI music is made up of a number of different subfields. So of course you have artificial intelligence, you have also programming, but also you have music processing. And that in and of itself is a huge, huge uh, field with a lot of skills to learn and it takes a lot of time. Now let's move on to the ideal characteristics that we want to have in AI music engineers. I'm going to mix both generic characteristics as well as very specialized ones. First, you want someone who's very well versed in the Python programming language. And why Python? Well, Python is very important because it is the language of artificial intelligence and most libraries and frameworks regarding artificial intelligence as well as AI music are written in Python. Now, this is a fundamental requirement, but there's also a nice to have, and that is what if a person also knows C++. Now, C++ is not fundamental, but it's great to have, and that's because with Python, you can prototype your models, your AI music solutions, and then you can implement them in production using C++. C++ is way faster than Python, so you can use C++ for optimization. Once again, C++, nice to have, but not a fundamental requirement. Second point, you should look for someone who's well-versed in artificial intelligence, both traditional machine learning techniques with feature engineering, as well as deep learning uh, techniques. So regarding feature engineering and traditional machine learning, this is very important because many AI music tasks still today can be carried out fruitfully with traditional machine learning techniques. And for this, I would suggest for this person to be well-versed in a specific Python library for traditional machine learning that's called scikit-learn. Deep learning is a vast field. Depending on the type of task that you are interested in, you may require from people to be well-versed, for example, in generative deep learning models like variational autoencoders and generative adversarial networks. These are great for generating music or sound. For other type of tasks like music classification, you want for your candidate to be very familiar and experienced with convolutional neural networks. Now, What's important beyond uh, knowing the theory behind deep learning is also being uh, very familiar with a certain uh, deep learning frameworks in Python. And here there are a few, but the most important ones are TensorFlow, Keras, and PyTorch. It's not important that uh, a candidate has familiarity with all of these frameworks, but it's definitely important that the candidate has familiarity with at least one. The next point is specific to audio and music artificial intelligence, and that's being familiar with digital signal processing, more specifically with audio DSP. Now, why audio DSP is so important? Well, because audio DSP provides us with all the tools and techniques that we can use to extract information directly from audio and music signals. Some of these techniques are the Fourier transform, MFCCs, or spectrograms. Now, it's important that your candidate is well-versed with all of these concepts, both from a theoretical perspective as well as from an application point of view. 
Why is theory so important? Well, because if you want to get the maximum you can from your tasks, you should be able to tweak all the different variables, for example, in Fourier transform, so that you obtain what you want to obtain. The next characteristic is connected with the previous one. Specifically, we want our candidate to be familiar with audio signal processing libraries in the Python environment. So here we have a large choice of such libraries, but I would suggest a few of this. So Libreza is very important. It's open source and is a great library. You have an alternative to it that's called Essentia that's also great. So definitely check out whether your candidate has knowledge of either Libreza or Essentia. Both would be fantastic. And then you have certain libraries that apply to deep learning environments. We have um, Torch Audio, that's the kind of audio pre-processing uh, framework that you can use directly with PyTorch. And then you have the equivalent for um, TensorFlow that's called Capre. Now, check out whether like, your candidate also has knowledge like with this deep learning audio libraries. Now we are arriving at the big guns. We want for a candidate to have experience in either music information retrieval or generative music. Now, it's difficult to synthesize, summarize what music information retrieval or MIR is in five seconds. But if I had to do that, I would say that that is like the art and science of extracting information, retrieving information from music signals. And there are a bunch of tasks that you can do in, in MIR, like classifying genre, classifying moods, extracting musical instruments, or detecting melodies, or recognizing chords, right? And it's not important that your candidate has knowledge of all of these tasks, but rather that this person may be familiar and have experience with at least a few of these tasks. Once you have familiarity with one of these tasks, you can easily transfer that knowledge to other tasks within MIR. Now, what about generative music? Well, that is the kind of complementary side to music information retrieval. So if you think of AI music as being divided into two parts, you would have MIR on the one side, that's the kind of uh, extracting information, the analytical side, and then you have the generative, the creative one, which is generative music. So generating music with, or sound with AI. Now, also, uh, if uh, a candidate is well-versed in generative music, that's fantastic. Now, the great thing is that people who are experienced in generative music can easily transfer or pick up MIR stuff, skills, and the opposite case is also true. The best scenario for you would be to have someone who has experience in both generative music and MIR, but those type of people aren't too um, easy to find. The next point is super important, and it is the capacity of reading AI music papers and to implement those ideas and concepts in the real world. Now, I can't overestimate how important this is, and that's because you will be needing a lot of R&D. And so it's super important that your AI music engineers will be able to pick up like all the stuff that other people have done and understand how to implement those. It turns out that all of those like things, all of those ideas usually are published as academic papers. So you really want people who can read those complex AI music papers and then turn them into applications so that they can experiment with like the code, the ideas, and then tweak things and optimize your tasks. You should hire programmers, not scripters. Who are the scripters? In my vocabulary, scripters are those data scientists who are very good at training models, pre-processing data, optimizing models. And these people usually work with Jupyter notebooks, but these people also don't have a lot of experience with actual programming and software engineering practices, the best practices. By contrast, you should hire very good programmers, people who can write clean code, modular code, and follow the best software engineering practices, like for example, test-driven development. These people will provide you with high quality code that's gonna be maintainable, that's gonna be reusable, and ultimately is gonna increase the 
quality and the value that you will deliver to your customers. Now, how can you ascertain whether an AI music engineer is also a good programmer? Well, a good check is to ask this person whether he or she has had experience building an AI audio music pipeline. Well, this isn't super uh, common, but if you find someone who's done that work well, then that person should get a lot of credit for that. And that will definitely be like a huge plus. Now, another um, check that you can have is whether like this person has had experience deploying uh, models into production. And this is also like something very important. And at the same time, you should check whether like this person is familiar with applications like Docker, Kubernetes, or libraries like Django, or Flask for um, deploying a REST APIs in the Python environment. If a person checks all of those boxes, well, that is a good AI music engineer candidate. Last but not least, we have having a music background. This is important for a couple of reasons. First, by and large, I can tell you that people who have a music background are super passionate about their job being AI music engineers. I have a lot of friends who are very good AI engineers and who have also a music background and they are trying very hard to get into the AI music business. And I'm quite sure the moment they will get there, they will be super passionate because they are kind of combining these two passions they have. So the musical side and the scientific AI side. So if you find someone who has a background in music, there's a highly likelihood that this person is super interested in that aspect and it's gonna give you your 1000% for achieving like your AI music vision because AI music is not just a job, it's a big passion. Now, the second reason why I think having a music background is important is because it gives you an edge because you are a domain expert. And sometimes to solve AI music issues, having domain knowledge is very important. It can help you define the problem in a way that makes more sense from a domain perspective, music domain perspective. And at the same time, it can ameliorate the algorithms that you can build and can enable you also like just to evaluate the algorithms because you know the domain. These were nine characteristics that you should look for in your ideal AI music engineer candidates. Of course, you won't find people who check all of those boxes, but your idea should be that of finding people who check as many boxes as possible. I know that hiring AI music talent can be a daunting process. Sometimes you don't know where to look for, nor you have the expertise to know whether like people actually check all of the boxes that I discussed in this video. So if you need any help, I can help you with hiring your AI music team. Specifically, I'm an AI music consultant and you can check my website for seeing all the different services that I offer. Okay, so I hope you found this video useful and that's all for today. I hope I'll see you next time. Cheers for now.